What do Paris Hilton and Chris Hemsworth have in common? Hmm. Well, apparently, they both want to bring animals back to life. But we're not talking about making your favorite pet live forever. Nope. These celebs are actually helping a science company bring back animals that no longer exist, like the mammoth, the Tasmanian tiger, and even the iconic dodo. If everything goes according to plan, these fascinating creatures could be walking among us again by 2028. This groundbreaking effort is led by a company called Colossal Biosciences. At this very moment, they're working on a way to revive the core genes of animals that disappeared from Earth ages ago. The idea is to replicate those genes using DNA from a close living relative. If that's all Greek to you, don't worry. We'll break it down a bit later. So, the mammoth is one of the animals they plan to bring back, and people are especially hyped about it. These incredible, massive creatures roamed parts of Africa, Europe, Asia, and North America until about 4,000 years ago. Some people might mix them up with modern elephants, but there are some key differences. For starters, they had huge curved tusks that curled inward and were used to dig for food. They also adapted to survive in freezing climates, like having two layers of thick fur to keep their blood warm. But mammoths and elephants do have a lot in common. The woolly mammoth shares 99.5% of its genes with its closest relative, the Asian elephant. That's huge because it means that mammoths are genetically closer to Asian elephants than Asian elephants are to African elephants, for example. The company's bold plan is to create a living, walking elephant-mammoth hybrid that looks just like the ones that used to roam the planet. This animal will look like, walk like, and even sound like a woolly mammoth. But most importantly, it'll be able to live in the same ecosystem that the mammoth left behind. If the scientists succeed in bringing back enough of these creatures, one of their big goals is to help restore the Arctic tundra ecosystem. But how do they actually plan to create the mammoth? Here's their plan. First, they need to find well-preserved samples of woolly mammoths in places like Alaska, for example. Then they'll need to sequence the mammoth's genome and the genome of its closest relative, the Asian elephant. The next step is to identify the important genes that made the woolly mammoth perfectly adapted to cold temperatures, like its shaggy hair, curved tusks, and dome-shaped cranium. In other words, they need to identify which genes make the mammoth, well, the mammoth. Now comes the interesting part. They will use top-notch gene editing tools, kind of like scissors, to cut the Asian elephant DNA and replace those spots with the mammoth sequence. This will allow them to create a new cell line and later an embryo. This embryo will grow inside a healthy female Asian elephant who will be the surrogate. And just like that, a new cold adapted elephant will be born. Or at least that's what scientists hope. Specialists predict that this mammoth 2.0 could be on Earth as early as 2028. The reason it will take a while is that their gestation period is around 22 months. But if that deadline feels too far for you, there is actually a chance we could get a surprise a lot sooner. That's because some of the other animals they plan to revive have a much shorter gestation period, like Australia's thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger. The company is also doing whatever it takes to give this animal a second shot at life. And the good news is that the process seems to be well advanced. Recently, the group announced that the Tasmanian tiger's genome is about 99% complete. This animal was native to the Australian mainland and the islands of Tasmania and New Guinea. A big part of the Tasmanian tiger population disappeared over 3,000 years ago but about 5,000 of them kept roaming around until pretty recently. It's believed that the last thylacine passed away in 1936. To revive the Tasmanian tiger, scientists first need a sample of the ancient animal. So they took RNA molecules from a 110-year-old preserved head that had been kept in ethanol. The team was really lucky because it's rare to find old samples that are so well preserved allowing scientists to use advanced DNA analysis techniques. 
And by that, I mean they did a full, complete analysis. By studying RNA samples from important tissue areas like the tongue, nasal cavity, brain, and eyes, experts were able to learn a bunch of interesting things about the Tasmanian tiger. They could figure out how its brain worked and also what this beast could smell, see, and taste. By the way, these semi-nocturnal animals had a special appetite for small rodents, lizards, and birds. After finding the perfect sample, the process of reviving it will be pretty much the same as with the mammoth, but with an elephant as a DNA donor, of course. In the case of the Tasmanian tiger, its closest living relative is a small marsupial called the fat-tailed dunnart. Even though this animal is small, it is a ferocious carnivore. So experts believe the whole DNA editing process will work just fine with its sequence. Their goal is to turn a fat-tailed Dunnart cell into a thylacine cell. To accomplish that, they did more than 300 unique genetic changes into a Dunnart cell. So there is no doubt they're pushing all the boundaries to make the dream of reviving animals a reality. This project also plans to revive the iconic dodo. You know, that funny-looking bird from the paradisiacal island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean? And here, things get a little trickier, since we don't know much about this creature, which has origins that go back about 23 million years. Basically, the only clues we have about what dodos looked like when they were alive come from a handful of drawings, paintings, and written descriptions from the 17th century. But since those pictures are all pretty different from each other, and only a few of them were based on real, live dodos, we're still not 100% sure what they actually looked like. And as for how they behaved, well, we don't know much about that either. That's why reviving this long-absent legend will be super interesting and really enlightening. The sample they used to extract an old dodo genome came from a skull in the collection of the Natural History Museum of Denmark. And the dodo's closest living relative, which will provide the host cells, is the Nicobar pigeon, a grey bird with colourful features found in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands in India. If everything goes smoothly, in a couple of years we might see the fabulous and iconic dodo with our own eyes. Reviving animals might sound impossible, but science and technology together can be a real game-changer not only by protecting today's animals, but also by restoring species that disappeared from the planet long ago. Actually, we've already pulled this off. A wild goat called the Bucardo, also known as the Pyrenean Ibex, went extinct in the year 2000. But three years later, scientists managed to bring it back to life, using a method pretty similar to what we've talked about in this video. It took 57 tries, but one of them finally worked, and a Bacardo clone was born. Unfortunately, the animal only lived for 10 minutes. You might think that wasn't a success, but it was actually a huge step forward in the whole animal revival field. Now, specialists can only hope the project to bring back the dodo, the mammoth, and the Tasmanian tiger go a bit better. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.